I think collage is everywhere. I see it in the morning in the newspaper. I see it on the cell phone. You see it on the TV. Whatever you're doing, you see this collage, multiple images everywhere. Even in the backyard, the tree, the sky, the clouds, the rain, you know, the layers and layers and layers. So that is collage. My name is P. Mantaram, and there is one P. Mantaram in the whole world who is an artist in Canada and so in India. I make collages. I make good collages, which will make you happy or unhappy, but I make collages. That's all what I do. My first drawing was in grade three, maybe a bird. One time I was just playing marbles outside uh, in the street and one uh, person, he passed by and he said, Mansaram, you should go to JJ School of Art. He just said that and walked away. I said, where is JJ School of Art? He said, in Bombay. So I said, what is their address? He says, just write them, JJ School of Art, Bombay, the letter will reach them. So that's what I did. He went to art school um, at a time right after India gained independence from British colonialism. And it was a time that was, you know, full of hope and aspirations and freedom and a lot of planning for the future. And the Sir JJ School of Art was one of the big kind of bastions of art training at the time. Extremely well-known school still today, but had its roots sort of in uh, colonial art education, uh, but had uh, become a school that was really producing um, some of the artists of the new generation of this modern India. We were not going to produce traditional art. That was not, not the idea. See, now the teachers were doing modern art. Everybody else was doing modern art. Everybody was expecting you to do that. But how to do it? Like, could you look at your traditional or could you just ignore it or could you just forget it? No, you can't forget it because it's so strong. The miniature painting, the folk art, the tribal art is so strong and so beautiful. So you can't ignore that. When he was studying in Bombay, he became aware of the different elements uh, in society of visual culture. So whether it be film posters or the billboards or the mass produced prints of gods and goddesses that would be sold on the street corners. In the 60s, he got a scholarship to study in Amsterdam, which was very a formative part of his career. Um, and he was exposed to artists um, in the Cobra group. Uh, as well as printmaking that was happening at that time and a certain spontaneity of art practice. And that was also, I think, entered into the mix of ingredients that went into his work. And from then on, his interest in graphic arts got combined with printmaking and I would say expanded into all forms of mass reproducibility. I was painting in Amsterdam. Then I saw the map of Amsterdam. If you look at, buy a map of Amsterdam with all these canals, 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 it looks like so beautiful to look at. Then I thought, I want this image to be part of my painting or a collage. So I used that, cut and paste that one thing because I liked it so much. And that's the beginning of the collage making. Collage is a super important element of Mansaram's work and in many ways, is not just a technique, but a working practice. It's a way of living for him, a way of being an artist. In India is not so rich a country, but still people are buying my art. So if I, we we're going to a more affluent country, people have more money, they'll buy more of my art. But uh, it didn't happen, nobody was buying my art. So I had asked, Ev Isaacs of Isaacs Gallery, whom 
Marshall McLuhan introduced me uh, that how come nobody is buying my art? Eh? So he said nobody is buying his artist art either. So how do they make a living? He said they work and mostly they teach. He said why don't you try your hand at teaching? So I started at his advice and his introductions. I started teaching part time in Toronto and that gave me some taste of teaching and then I was offered a full time job in Hamilton in the school. His interest in these ephemeral found objects that he continued to collect through the 60s and 70s, and it became source material in his work. While he might be using acrylics or oils on the one hand, putting bits of ephemera into the paintings was as much a part of that technique as anything else. And it became this uh, way of layering. When I first became aware of the power of camera, was when I was taking pictures to record the street scene in Delhi. Uh, and I saw one guy, a rickshaw man, and there was a nice picture on his rickshaw. And he was sleeping in there. I took that picture. And I didn't think too much of that picture at that moment. But it was at that time black and white. I knew that camera does some magic. Black and white in the, like it's more dominant actually in black and white images. He has taken Hindu uh, deities and overlapped them onto Western images. A street scene, one I think is uh, of Delhi, one I believe is of Amsterdam, and he has these deities, and he's superimposed a photograph on the photograph. And there's something really delightful and comical, but at the same time you think immediately like, oh, deity must be important. What is the meaning of that deity? But in a sense, you kind of just have to relax a little bit and just like enjoy that serendipity. McLuhan's ideas very much connected with things Mansaram was already intuiting um, and working with. And there was a great synergy between the two. And I think up until today, that um, notion of the medium is the message is very much a part of Mansaram's work. So when we were in, in Toronto and met McLuhan, so idea came to me, I said, Marshall, I said, let's do a painting together. I'll do the painting, you write what you are talking about, your ideas and so on. So you just have to write, he said, sure. Collage is the medium. You can express anything through collage. So Mansaram is arguably uh, an originator or was the first from his generation of modern artists and I'd include the progressives movement which was started by Sousa to examine and explore fully the potential of collage. When you look at his art you can see the technology progressing and right up to the point now where he uses computer manipulation uh, and, and Photoshop to enhance and accentuate his work. Collage is basically mixed media because it's much easier to express when you have so many helpers, you know, and so many media to help you. I do so many media together, it has been working for me, so I said why not call it Mansa Media. Mansa Media is really a, a mixture of different mediums. Mansa Media is making a collage out of technique. <laughs> Mansa Media ha, is just a great term to describe the different phases and materials that Mansaram has worked with. Intuitive spillage is Mansa Media. I feel that um, for Mansaram's work, collage really is a metaphor for the diasporic experience. As a diasporic person and artist, I think that he experienced multiple cultures uh, um, simultaneously in a way that it had a sort of layering effect. 
it seemed like that uh, we were living in two cultures. So it is always craving the images of India, even during the day working in the Canadian scenes. But whenever we came home, whenever I came home, I needed to have uh, my own environment and do so. Probably that was such a great need that maybe every year we went to India and uh, I collected these images to be able to create an environment for ourselves at home, back home here. And that inspired us, that helped us to live in two cultures with the balance. Certainly in India, I think they could understand what the signs were that they were seeing, especially with the collaged materials. Um, and I think in Canada, they could understand um, the collage technique without reading the signs. Uh, he could cherry pick references and when they're slammed together, um, the sum of the, the parts is great. Um, because it, it's challenging the viewer to reconfigure what they already know, um, what they can already infer about what the references are. Canadian art can um, uh, uh, admit these streams from outside and, the, and, and, make them, and make them Canadian and, and let um, them turn the Canadian into something different from what it was. It's almost as if he's having some kind of dream consciousness with it because there are things about this work that don't necessarily make sense. And that to me is just the artist at work. And so Montserrat has talked about just that kind of poetic state or that trance that sometimes he would be in in his earlier years of working in the studio. It's also a very big play on Canadian, on Canadiana, uh, but by bringing in a new Canadiana, the Trudeau, the Trudeau years. It's like a tongue-in-cheek reference, referencing India, what he knows that is in him, but bringing, trying to bring wrestle with that from a Canadian lens, but thankfully not mimicking the group of seven, thankfully not doing a Canadian landscape. Rather, this is like an internal landscape. He's a consummate Canadian artist, um, brave enough to, uh, to use the traditions and, and break with them at the same time.